Harden, damn you! Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Backface Teardown Lab. Yes, today we have another Walkman we're going to have a look at, and today's Walkman is a Sony WM2, and it seems to feature logic controls. Now, it does look pretty good. I've popped some batteries in and cleared the crusts from the battery bay, and when I push the button, the I say it's play button, it's got this forward to confuse me. Push that. I can definitely hear it doing something. I can hear something grinding away inside, but nothing is spinning. Same with forward and reverse. So that's a good sign. So at least power is getting somewhere, but we're gonna have to take it apart. But look at this. This is a novelty, isn't it? There's a battery bay is internal into it. And I think before we rip it apart, Let's just go over the main features. One, it's got this really interesting cutout here, which I don't know it's, if it's a feature or what, but I think it's nice to kind of hold that when you're popping the eject mechanism. So it might be part of that, or it might be to aid you to remove your tape because you see here, the cassette head and gubbins, and I think this was the capstan, did we agree? Or the something wheel, whatever. Um, is all in there and that sort of slides with it when you turn the tape over and you can see that the battery's there and pretty much it's all open and then on the top here you've got three volts and the open button you've got two sets of headphones interesting enough a and b for you and your friends to listen to a lovely rotary volume switch oh look at that gonna have to do a cl extreme close-up on that volume it's so nice come on camera you can do it it doesn't want to Let's just, let's just leave it. That didn't work. Ooh, it's too much for the camera to take. You've got forward, stop, fast forward and reverse and a little battery warning, normal or metal tape indicators there. And really not much on the bottom apart from the usual spec, Sony WM2 cassette player. Battery supply, 1.5 volts times two. And that's really kind of unusual the way the batteries both go in the same way. So I'm guessing it's still three volts, but it's doing the wiring inside. So that's kind of unusual on a lot of things because they'll normally skimp on the uh, metal work and try to get them to, uh, I'll show you why once we get in there actually. Easy to explain. So got the battery door off. Let's see what we can see. Screw, 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 screw. You would like some screw, screw? So I'm gonna just undo the obvious screws. Now, sometimes you'll find when you do this, you don't really need to undo all the screws, but as this is my first time with this unit and I have not looked at any guides, I have no idea how this comes apart. We're gonna just basically run into this. Um, what you might wanna do if you're following along at home because you're repairing one, you might want to, and I know it could be a long video, but you might wanna watch it all the way to the end or skip a few stages, but just get to the end because normally I make a lot of mistakes going through and then at the end I'm going, well, I wish I did this or that differently. What we can do potentially as well is undo those and take this off. But I'm kind of tempted to leave this for now because on previous Walkmans, and I say Walkman as in Sony, but not really, I'm talking about just other makes. Ah, there we go. You see, you found that if you um, are gentle with it, you might find that the tape mechanism and the door all seems to be linked together. So you can get the back off carefully. Now I can see that plastic bit, the black plastic bit is going with the silver. So it's doing pretty good. I think it's basically gonna be stuck on that volume control. My gut feeling, if I try to turn it, is the volume control getting stiffer or not? I think it is, you know, guys. And we're gonna to have to work out how we're gonna undo that. So have a look, you've got two holes here and that'd be for a pronged tool to twist that out. Give me a moment to figure this out and then we'll uh, We'll get that off. It didn't take long for me to figure it out. And uh, the answer was already kind of more or less in my hand. So really, I've just put the two prongs of my tweezers, and these are my shite tweezers, but they have been milled down. I did mill them down to make them a little bit more accurate for surface mount work. And they fit quite nicely as a result. So we're gonna pop those in and do that screw. Now you don't see this kind of feature on the uh, modern stuff. This would be way too expensive. Almost there. 
Can I tell you what? That's a long thread. I know you can't see it just yet, but hang on. Hold on. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Look at that. That is some thread on there. And look, it just it just locks straight in. Um, let's be careful when we put this back on because we want to make sure that it's you know all the way minimum or maximum. You know, <laughs> leave the volume indicator in an unknown position. Let's work it a little bit more. Oh, he's still fighting with us. Still fighting. Come on. Let's see what's, what needs to be poked through. If I'm going to hazard a guess, I would say it's the headphone socket, but just give it a little grip. I really don't want to break anything, but I'm prepared to use reasonable force. Ah, oh, there we go. And the volume control knob looked like it could have stayed put. As you can see there, the volume control knob could have stayed put. Oh well. So, motor. In fact, what is that? This is some cra Ah! Whoa! Okay, so basically the knob eject knob just popped off and it had this massive spring in it here. I didn't catch where that came from, so that's going to be a little bit of fun, but at least I caught the spring. Be careful, guys. It's somewhere, somewhere in here. Right, so I'm guessing that's the motor. Yes, that is the motor there. That is a flywheel. And there's a belt. Ooh, and you can see as I turn the flywheel, the belt... <laughs> I was going to say, the belt was spinning, but the belt stopped spinning because it looks like the belt's broken. I think the belt literally, we spun the last of it yet. So that's going to be a bit of a contraption there. Let's leave that, let's leave the belt entrails there. What else can we see on here while we're looking? All sorts of interesting stuff. So there's your buttons, there's your LED. Look, it's a standard LED with the legs bent out. Isn't that cute? That was sort of pre surface mount LEDs. There's your mechanisms going on. Now I think let's play it safe and remove the headphone socket so we can just dash that bit of plastic away. Not break any plastic today please. Snap. There we go. And actually there's a future mod here. It looks to me like we could improve that performance by actually adding a bit of glue. It has been heat welded actually. That was probably factory heat welded and that's come off and that's why that bit's loose. So a bit of resin. We'll use our old resining skills there later. Pop that on. Right, so everything is in there. So the question is, do we need to take this plate off to get that little bit closer? Well, I think we, we're gonna go for it. Let's take the um, hinges off. We're going in deep. Oh, this one looks like it was half undone anyway. Probably from all the cranking this has been received. This has been received, all the cranking over the years. And look, these things suggest to me that they reuse these chassis a lot. I imagine if you look in the catalogs, they probably had a lot of Walkman that look really similar. That's kind of cute how that mechanism works. So there's nothing really in that. Unlike that AWOL one which had the auto reverse thing which had a load of gubbins, this one hardly any really. I'm guessing the only thing is when you press play it's the thing that might just do that with the head. In fact I think the head was permanently attached to it. So the real challenge for us though is how do we get in to where we need to get the belt on. So on the previous radio uh, Walkman we did, the um, PCB came out. Um, no such luck so far. So I think we're going to have to undo some of these screws. I'm going to go for these three screws along the middle. Oh, so tiny. And if you're doing this, you might want to use a work mat. And like an idiot, my work mat, I can see, is currently buried under loads of stuff. And they've got little, lots of little tiny troughs. And it's all made of silicon, so it's a bit grabby. Um, definitely go for that if you've got one. Right, so let's test this by just gingerly... I'm gingerly probing it um, with my fingers. Ah, looking here again. More screws on the pack. 
I'm lucky I've got video evidence of doing this because if I really screw up, <laughs> excuse the unintended pun, I've got at least some chance of trying to figure out where the screws went back by reviewing the old video, but that is always a chore. I always try to record everything in one go and that would really, really slow me down to do this. If you want to see videos where people don't do that, I'd suggest go over to Techmoan or someone. He will take a lot of care to make sure that it's right. Ah, oh, ginger, 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 ginger. I can feel a little bit of yielding. There's the tiniest amount of yield. And I can see in there, you see the drive belt? Right there, it's wrapped. Appears to be wrapped around here and it's idling on there and then it goes continues to wrap around there so let's get it out although it is on there it's just it's like it's slipped or something I suspect it's just gone all slack slack bladder it's gone all slack slack bladder slack bladder it's caught in the gears, that's why it had so much friction behind it. So we have a belt, one, one belt, and it's really crusty. Unlike the other belt that we took off the previous radio, this one is really crusty. In fact, phantom belts, I've just dropped all over. I'm just dropping my belts like nobody's business. So we go into our backer belts. Find the nearest equivalent that we can, and you don't want it too tight because that will put pressure on the bearing surfaces and may wear it out. Although, as I said before, you might not care if it's a particularly old radio. So, I'm just going to dig deep here. Some of these belts look like old belts, and we thought, sort of, did you put an old one back in? This one looks really worn, so I'm going to not use that one right now until I can confirm its oldness or youngerness. Yeah, this one looks grey, this one looks a bit blacker. Right, so if I was going to do a guesstimate, yeah, I would say that's about the same. Stress test, did you see that? The one on the right just went bing! Clearly indicating that it's not worth our time worrying about that one. So the new belt is going in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to give you a better view, but forgive me if I do go off camera a little bit because these are fiddly and I'm actually not looking at the camera <laughs> because I'm trying to look at your belt here. Now if you want an easier time of it you could probably ooh, like there it just loosened up you could probably dig deeper into the chassis and remove that PCB um, at your own peril really. It uh, We've really undone a, a bunch of screws it might well just be that it's almost out um, Go on, shall we just have a quick... I'll do it so you don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm going to take off these stickers here on the bottom. Get that motor. Get... Oh my gosh, such thin wires. They feel like just the bite of your tweezers might be enough to break those. Be careful. That is perilous. So basically what's keeping in the uh, PCB is there's some wires here. You might see them just there, some very fine wires along the chassis. And they're taped in. I don't think they're going to a connector. I think it's direct solder. Let's leave those be. Let's leave those be in case we disturb something we don't. So I'm going to go again for that big roller. And it's going over the idler. Over the idler, around the gums, watch out stomach, here it comes. And it has to go, annoyingly, behind all of those wires that we said are the ones we don't want to disturb. So I'm going to get the tweezers in there. Ooh, some good tweezer in. And we've got the end here. But that, to me, seems alarmingly slack. Alarmingly slack. I don't think that the belt sizing was right. I think that the old belt was so worn, it's not going to work out. Right, let me get another belt. 
I gave in a little and detached the wires from here so I could open this out a little bit and with a shorter belt I've managed to get it around this pulley here, around the idler and to the motor. And what I thought I'd do while this is open I ought to get my little brush and get in there with some lubricant. So I do have some silicone lubricant in my syringe and I'm just gonna just gently brush it actually on the uh, teeth. There's some geared teeth in there and there's a little bit of mechanisme, mechanisme, but everything's looking pretty smooth flowing really. That's just to kind of help it out a little bit, you never know. And because it's slightly solventy, it might just clean it out a bit. So let's see if we can get this back down. So I had to pull this wire here through, so I'm just gonna pull that back a little bit. There's actually a kink in there, which is fortunate. The kink is where it was clipped in here. And then that was wrapped down like that. And just to show you, remember I was saying about the battery? Normally, these two pieces of metal are joined together and that's why you have your batteries go end to end. Um, but here they've actually ran additional wires, which is so cute. They put a lot of effort into that. Just gonna check that those wires that were popped up that I just adjusted are back down because it's quite near that belt. There's a chance they could rub on that if they uh, go awry. But they're, still, they're locked in, that's gonna be fine. So it just really is a case of me trying to remember the screws. Uh, I do remember that they were these kind of silvery ones. Let's just go with that for now. There's nothing worse though than putting screws in something to find that uh, you filled up a hole that needs to be filled with a screw from outside the chassis. But I can see four holes and I have four silver screws, so I'm pretty confident in this. Screw in the hole, that's how we roll. This is quite a nice Walkman though, I'm, uh, and it's a legit Walkman, as in a Sony Walkman, so it has to live. Live! Um, and I've got my pot noodle speaker here just off in the background, just turned on ready, because I think we want to do a little test. I think we're ready for a test. I'm certainly ready. I'm going to plug into one of the headphone sockets, and I'm going to adjust the volume knob by hand to something. I don't know, that's just put it in the middle, so it's not too quiet, not too loud. And very carefully get that in there. Although, hang on a minute, how did... oh, okay. <laughs> so the uh, eject thing was just a, an eject latch, looking at that, that was there, because this mechanism doesn't lock in any way. Okay, we got our things in. Oh, there we go, that was spinning when I hit the old forward mechanism. Good, so put your tape in. Ho oh, ho ho! Nice! That's pretty cool. Right, let's get that plane again. A little bit crusty on the volume control. <laughs> so let's try just to make sure any of these moving pieces are lubricated. Hmm, I think it's working pretty good. I had a little adjustment here on the speed, just ever so slightly, because it wasn't sounding quite right. So I've got my favourite uh, tape here, which is Street Hawk. Pirate of the road. So I do hope the YouTube copyright police won't get me for this, but we'll have a little quick listen to that, make sure that sounds okay. Push our play. Barrage door, and soon Street Hawk is cruising around the streets of the city. Ah, oh, nice. For pirates of the road. Pirates of the road! At last, Jesse comes across them, stealing from a seized up car on a deserted highway. Oh, I tell you what, I could just sit and listen to that, but there's no time to listen to that because we've got to put it all back together before I forget where everything went. And that's kind of what I advise in a way. If you're not going to do something in one sitting, oh, you better be, you better be sharp. You better be sharp like a knife. 
to make sure that you don't uh, mislay everything. Now there is something I do want to do before I just jump in there. You can see this battery contact. It's not only a bit bent, but it's a bit green. I'm going to try to get in there and get that greenery off there. And I advise you do the same if you've got one, because it's a little bit annoying to get to. And I'm just going to use these archery forceps to get that spring and correct it. Oh, that is corrected and a half. That's going to be fine for us. And poke that through. Now, we had three screws in here, didn't we? Scrooge McDuck. What was with Scrooge McDuck then? Who what was he? Was he like the, you know, Donald Trump or something of his time? Just wanted to accrue all of that lovely, lovely wealth, but not spend it on his thieving, grabbing, his thieving, grabbing bloody nephews. I think they were his nephews, weren't they? Um, just going to pop a little teeniest amount of... Uh, just going to pour the teeniest amount of oil of silicon lubricant into there just to make sure that they're spinning nicely. So they've got little springs and stuff in there just to keep tension. It would be nice to make sure they're moving a little bit freely and any extra, just rub it off. It's no different really from that back to black type stuff that you use in your car. If you've ever used that on your dashboard, look, if you rub it here on all the plastic, look at that. Doesn't it give you a lovely shine? So if you want that showroom shine, do that, but don't do it on anything that you intend to paint unless you like lots of little uh, goldfish eyeball type things looking up at you from your paintwork because it hates silicone. It reacts to it in a very bad way. Um, there we go. But I don't. I like silicone and I react to it lovely. <laughs> so we've got that in there. Now the tricky part we're going to have is that lock mechanism and of course something I should have remembered earlier when I had the chance to get this thing bonded in and just having a closer look at it I'll show you it's heat bonded so yeah a bit of a no-no I'm gonna just epoxy that up and we'll put that aside to dry while we put everything else together So we know that's going to take some minutes to harden. So I might as well check this out, see how this all worked. That basically slides in and around, in and around, up and down. 21 bottles of beer on the wall. Giving them an extra, extra little pinch. I want to make sure that is good. So something we could look at, but probably not really achieve much with, is you've got this potentiometer at the moment, and it is dirty. When we were using it, you could hear that there was that crackly snap, crackle and pop. And if you've got something, maybe like your silicone, I'm going to try that in there. Um, I'm basically going to put it in. I'm going to wind this back and forth a bit. in the hope it's going to clean out some of that old carbon but you never know it might make it worse <laughs> let's hope it doesn't if not um, I do have a kind of a carbon varnish that I've not tried it for this purpose but I think probably could be used to restore some of these I'm just going to tap that out make sure that there's no excess liquid in there Right, I think we're to the point where we've just got to wait for that plastic to harden. Just to test the volume control now as well, listen. Beautiful, nice and smooth, no crackly crispies. Come on, harden, damn you. But soon its roaring sank to a sigh. Its great legs suddenly grew weak. The body sank down and fell with a heavy thud upon its side. The dragon was dead. Do, 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 do. All right, you caught me. It wasn't quite hardened, but I kind of got it on there. I figure 
getting these screws in and getting all this chassis together is going to pinch it all nicely and aid the gluing process rather than hinder it. There wasn't really much trouble. The only thing to be aware of that's going to be a little bit fiddly is that old uh, eject mechanism because you've got a spring that has to go in there. Remember that little tiny spring? But yeah, even with my fat fingers, it was fine. So you won't have a problem. Don't you worry your sweet little brow. Dr. Andrews showed you how. Now, the last thing of concern, of course, is our lovely knob. So let's get our knob set to minimum volume. So if you're restoring one of these, I'm restoring it as in rather than just repairing it. You could go through and clean all of these things, couldn't you? You'd have a wonderful time. I know there's those of you out there who love that sort of thing. You'll be polishing, adjusting, making sure everything's just so. And look at that. Ooh, -cha. the zero is on the top and we wind it around. Ten, zero. It's a beauty. I'm a telling you, it's a beauty. It's pretty, uh, <laughs> that there's the zero there and then when we wrap it there you got the 10 there so it's kind of the middle of the gauge is where that's falling but there's a keyway in that it can't be any other way so we've got it right that's the way that mr sony intended it and i think i'm gonna to have to start this by thumbing it giving it a heavy thumb in as they say down the mines My heavy thumbing is working. I do believe it's working. Uh -huh. Such a thread. They didn't skimp on the old threads in those days. Damn, you did a fine job, Dr. A. Yes, I know I did. Amazing. Right. Let's get our old Pro Elec batteries in there. Probably some of the worst batteries known in the whole of the world. And our lovely unbent battery contact now is ready to accept that battery with much glee. Not gonna, uh, not gonna put the battery cover on because I'm kind of not gonna leave the batteries in it. But yeah, why not? Let's be completionist, and we're gonna put in. The Unicorn, Chiron the Centaur, the Werewolf, the Salamander. And I kind of remember listening to these as a kid. Kind of scary. Scary stuff for a youngster. But it is a blast from the past. I am probably was listening to this the same age as my kids are now, which is many, many years ago, like 33 years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> let's have a little listen. The villagers were creeping from their cottages. And you notice that that crackle what is they gone. They had nearly given in order to save their own lives. Ooh. Yet hardly observing them. The only downside is, of course, we've got to laboriously turn the tape, which we didn't have to do on that last player. Held by some inner terror, he leapt from his stool and flung it into the fire. Next, he added his table Ooh, to the ground. Exciting rain. stuff. But for now, we will have to conclude the video because you have been with me on this journey for long enough. And I feel you would like to rest your really, really blur, blah, 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 um, rest your weary brows and uh, go do something else. And in the meantime, I'm going to just remove some of the detritus and dust from inside here, as is my want, as is my need. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully that's of use to you for your Sony WM-2 stereo cassette player with norm and metal settings. Um, if you've got one of these, please uh, feel free to shout down below. Look at the various links in my description. Join the Discord, join the chat. Uh, like and subscribe if you'd like to show your support and be aware of more videos coming. And of course, there's always Patreon if you want to give me a dollar I would be most pleased to receive it and show you more things like this. As ever, thank you for watching.